This is the show dedicated to raising up the next generation of men of faith and character. My name is Mark Stanifer. Welcome to The Next Men Up. Hey guys, Mark Stanifer here. Welcome back to The Next Man Up and to another episode dedicated to raising up the next generation of healthy and godly men. So glad to have you with us for yet another episode, and I'm super excited to bring this one to you. Today, I get to introduce you to Darren Lewis. Darren is a husband, he's a father of four boys, and for the last 12 years officially, but even before then, he's been investing into the hearts and the lives of fathers and their kids. And and today he's the director of an organization called Fathering Adventures, dedicated to doing just that. Darren and I had a fantastic conversation ranging from lots of different topics like father wounds and talking Lion King. I, I get Darren's perspective on what authentic manhood looks like. And we hear him unfold his story about rediscovering his own heart as God the Father worked him through his own wounds and healed him from those and and really prepared him through continuing initiation to do the work for his own sons and to lead other fathers and their sons on this journey. And toward the end, there's a key moment where Darren talks about two critical things that are important to, to give into, to speak into the lives of our boys as they go on their own initiation process. And so I'm just really thrilled to be able to share this one with you and to introduce you to Darren. I know you're going to like it. So let's just get right into it. Here's the first part of my conversation with Darren Lewis. Hey, so Darren, it's so good to see you, man. Thank you. I Look, I know you're busy. I know you're coming up on your busy season and you got a lot going on, but thank you for carving out some time for for me and for this audience today. It's a, It's a pleasure to have you on. It's my absolute pleasure, Mark. I love, I love, I love our chats. I love our communication, and and so um, it's my absolute pleasure. It's I've made it a priority. <laughs> you know, I, I'm never I, too busy to talk with you. I, well, thank you. I, I really wanted to do this in person, but seeing as how <laughs> the island of Australia and. and particularly your state, Queensland, right? Is yeah, like, they're, like yeah. they're, they're not letting in foreigners. So I will have to, we'll have to settle for the video technology. Yes. They've, they've put caps on all, you know, international and, you know, interstate travel. Um, if you, even if they did let you in, you would need to hotel quarantine for two weeks. And uh, yeah, I imagine it, I'm not worth <laughs> I'm oh, I not don't worth know. that. I don't um, know. We'll, we'll let our listeners decide that. But may, maybe someday, sure. maybe 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 someday, I can I can make I a trip to the land down under. That would uh, that'd be would be fantastic. So look, you and I, you, you mentioned, you and I have had a couple conversations. It's been an absolute mm-hmm. blast getting to know you and your heart and the the things the things that you're doing, which we'll get into a, a, as the conversation unfolds. But what strikes me is the. Um, the the juxtaposition of who you are today and and the mm-hmm. work and the things that you're doing today versus the story that that you had um, had growing up and mm-hmm. and I think I think correct me if I'm wrong but the way that you would describe it today is you're helping fathers develop thriving relationships at home. So how, how did so so how did you get to that? Like when, when you look at where you grew up and where you are today, do you find yourself just shaking your head at times? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. My wife and I both are continually amazed by um, by how it all happened. Um, you're right. You know, I, I grew up in a home where my dad, um, at least my at least from where I was standing, you know, I only saw him as an alcoholic and a workaholic. And, um, and I, there was one clear memory I have. I mean, I've got plenty of clear memories, but this one specific memory really drove me. And I, and although it's noble in a sense, it was actually, it wasn't really helpful. And, and, and so it was a memory I have of my father, um, swaying in front of me, um, standing over me, drool running down his face, not a, not a word was being exchanged. And I simply internally said, I will never be like you. Mm. I will be a good husband and a good father. Again, sounds noble. Uh, but, but I, it was all about me. 
and, yeah. and me making that happen. So that's not a good thing. Um, and so quite frankly, like that's what, that's all I wanted. I set the bar really low. All I wanted <laughs> to do was to be better. Wow. But I did want to be a good husband and good father. So to think that I could be ever become that based on the fact that I hadn't really had a role model for that and then to be able to go and help other men to be good husbands and good fathers, that just blows me away. So how I'm, I'm amazed. How old were you in, in that memory that you just uh, that you just shared? I think I was um, it would have so my father kicked me out of home when I was sixteen and mm. I lived out of home for about twelve months. And it was only when my mum um, she ended up leaving my dad at that stage and so I knew that I needed to go home and actually protect um, my younger brother who was 13. So I would have been 17 when that happened. Um, yeah, so wow. 32, 33 years ago. <laughs> yeah, but still a very vivid memory, a, vi- oh, a vivid impression. You know, and, and even, right there, yeah. even, even at that age, you know, old enough to ha- have some life under you, but but – to be that aware, like I, I don't, I don't want to be like that. Oh, I, I'd seen the destruction. Um, I, you know, I, I just, yeah, I, I, I didn't want to be like that. I didn't, didn't. It was, it was, it was just existing. It wasn't living, mm. and I, and I probably wouldn't have said it that way at the time. I just, to be honest, it was, it was probably hatred. Right, I, I wasn't a Christian. Um, uh, he wasn't a Christian, you know, like we we really, uh, there was just this disdain that, that existed uh, from me to him. In fact, <clears throat> I quite often tell a story um, to younger boys, uh, young men, um, to, to help kind of bridge the gap in their own relationships with their dads. I tell a story about, um, so when I was in like 12 years of age, I took on um, I was invited to to take to to go and uh, learn Shotokan karate, and uh, I um, initially I said no to the invitation, and and then I thought, hang on a minute, if I can become good at this, I can beat up my father. Mm. I mean, that was my vision. That mm. was what was propelling me forward to actually try and hurt my dad because of how much he had hurt me. Mm-hmm. Growing up, you know, in those in those earlier years, in those teenage years, and 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 I, and I tell a story that it, it had ended up happening one evening in and around that time. You know, it would have been 17, 18 maybe, and and it did not give me the satisfaction that I thought it would when I was twelve when I first started training. Yeah. So you, like so many other dads or so many other men, had this big. F- gaping father wound, you know, and, mm. and your story is your story, but that wound is still that, that father wound. And, uh, you know, it's, it, fortunately, it's something that I haven't had to experience, but, but the more mm. men that I talk to, the more I realize how common it is. And, mm. and, and your wound sounds pretty big and, <laughs> and, and pretty gnarly. So like, take, take us through how you were able to work through that wound, right? Because there's a there's a whole lot of ground between 17 and you're the man now helping to to protect your your little brother and, and serve your mom to to now you've got you got a whole lot of wisdom under your belt and you're returning, you know, you're you're giving back to the male community. How how did you get through that father wound? Well, um, I think I did what most men do and they just, you know, bite down and get through it, right? You know, the whole, uh, I remember reading um, uh, Wild at Heart by John Eldridge and, and I remember, you know, him talking about um, the, the John Wayne type characters and, you know, the, um, you know one of the, the Native American Indians would, would, would shoot an arrow into someone's chest and you just kind of break it off and just keep pushing forward. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and the reality is... It, and it may seem strange, but I, I think that maybe you know some of your listeners might might um, might be able to relate to this. Is I didn't know I had a father wound. Mm. I just thought, well, this is this is life, right? This is it just happened to me my life, but but this is life. You know, the, the the mantras that exist. You know, build a bridge and get over it. You know, leave the past in the rearview mirror, and and 
And it wasn't really until I read a book called uh, Raising a Modern Day Knight by Robert Lewis. Oh, yeah. And uh, he was just in that book sharing his story. And he he's probably old enough to be my dad, but um, he um, he tells his story. And my goodness, it was like it was my story that he was telling. And, and so he was communicating through his story that he had a father wound. So I, I could only conclude that I too had a father wound, which is really, I guess, then when we dare to invite Jesus in to, to, um, uh, to reveal if there is in fact one. And then when he begins to guide you, direct you, there was a, there was a, um, so 1994, my eldest son was born, and uh, and at that time, um, I remember being my wife was pregnant with him. We we're sitting in a movie theater, and this this uh, trailer came on for the Lion King, the very first Lion King movie. Oh yeah! And, and I remember going and seeing. It. I was like, oh, this is incredible. I, I want to go and see this. I remember seeing the movie, and after my son was born, you know, and he was about two years of age, I must have watched the movie about 300 times. But so I can recall you know recall it word for word but you know there's there's it's it's a story of a father wound right that's there's, right, that's there's right. This exactly little lion cub that that you know believed a lie that he had that he was responsible for his father's death and of course the the responsible adult the one who set all of this up completely failed um, him the father of lies sort of run away simba and never returned that's and, right and he kind of found this paradise where he kind of but, but the reality is he was never he was never a lion. He was eating bugs and beetles and grubs and things, and and uh, he wasn't being a lion. He wasn't becoming. He wasn't who he was. And and there's that very powerful scene where you know this this priest kind of figure, Rafiki, kind of stirs the waters, you know, and reveals. And and you know the the heavens open up and the father speaks, you know, and he and he just says, you know, you've forgotten who you are, yeah. you know, and and. You know, he's 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 basically saying your identity um, is is not the identity that you were meant for. It's not your destiny. You're not fulfilling that. You're not living that out because of this other false identity. And and so um, I, I I really I saw a message and specifically you know the re- remember right the oh yeah Fasa, James kind of Earl Jones big I'm getting chills just listening to you talk. I love that movie. And I, and I and this is before I was a Christian, so I became a Christian in '95, like '95, and and um, and it wasn't long into that that I sort of thought there's a message in that for Christians, right? You know, just even a communion message, even if only that. And I remember giving a message. It was it was a communion message, and then the then the message at church this particular day, and and it was really well received. And uh, and so I was walking around the following week around this park, praying and uh, just thanking God for that, and. And uh, he said, he said, Darren, great job. He said, but you know what? Um, that message was for you, mm. right? You are Simba, right? You've forgotten who you are. And and I, I, honestly, it was like, you know, he threw a, a, a bucket of water at me and woke me up. And, and, and so I'm like, oh, my goodness. You know, he just sort of said, Darren, it's like um, what you did with your heart was you took a big Bowie knife and you actually cut it off because it was slowing you down. So he was kind of interpreting what I'd done with my heart. Um, and it's the, the picture that he gave me was like a, um, a boat taking on water or an en- or a, 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 an airplane that, that um, has lost an engine and you just start bailing stuff out. And so what I did was I, I got rid of my heart and I was like in that moment when you revealed that, I was like, oh, fuck. Like, what good is a man without a heart? And yeah. and, and and so he um he, he says, no, no, I can heal this. And and so I just invited him in. And the way that he did that for me, and it's, it's going to be different for everybody, but the way he did it for me was actually through my dreams. So I would quite literally dream, and in that dream, I would see as adult me, you know, I would have been 33 at the time, I was looking in at um, – uh, at this young version of me with my dad and, you know, there was stuff going down. Now Jesus was right beside me mm. and he was interpreting what was taking place and how that was wounding my heart and then he would show me how to, um, you know, bring healing to to those places for that for those very specific incidences. So um, that was kind of a bit of the story of, of how I was healed myself. 
Wow, so cool. True, of, of my father the wound. There were there were wounds that came up like that that God revealed later in my journey, but but that was my father wound, which was the first one really the first wound I'd experienced and 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 certainly the, the biggest. So it, it, you you become aware through Robert Lewis's book and mm-hmm. and then Jesus is like, "Hey, let let me help you with that. I yeah. I, I can I can walk you through this and I, I can repair you and, and, and re- repair the wound. It reminds me, you mentioned John Eldridge. Um, it, it reminds me of what he talks about when he says uninitiated men, you know, like that's kind of what Simba was in, in the jungle with Timon and Pumbaa eating bugs and just lounging mm-hmm. around, right? He was an mm-hmm. adult male, but yeah. he was an uninitiated lion, and uh, mm-hmm. it's so it's so cool. I didn't know, like in 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 the numerous conversations we've had to date, I, I had not yet heard that story, which is uh, right. <laughs> it's well, cool. Yeah, it's cool. So so you you know this. We in, in this context, we talk a lot about manhood and mm-hmm. masculinity and men, and what what does it mean to be a man? I, I know this is something that you've given a lot of thought to, and you help other guys work through. So. So when you when you hear the phrase authentic manhood, what does that mean to you? Unpack that a little bit. Yeah, so I guess um, what 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 helps me, what's what what makes things easier for me to unpack that is is the fact that I I have two versions of men in mind, right? Um, so there's almost a comparison that that takes place. Um, rather than just giving the definition of, of authentic manhood, I guess I, I look also look at, at conventional manhood. Um, uh, most men, and and um, and you know, sadly, m- most men today um, are still there's are un- uninitiated men, as 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 you quoted John Eldridge before. You know, there, there's still, if we're really honest. Um, Boys in men's bodies. So, so I was 29 years of age when I read Robert's book. Okay. 29 years of age, and and that's the thing. The subtitle of that book is is a father's role in guiding his sons to authentic manhood. And I remember thinking, you know, he was talking about you know this the idea of having a vision for manhood and imparting that to our sons. And and I was thinking, oh my goodness, I don't have that. Where do you find that? Like it's it's and so I I had to. I had to, it was, a, I guess, a, a new understanding for me is, my goodness, I, I'm, I'm not a man. I'm 29 years of, that, of, of age. I've been married for nine years at the time. I had three sons at the time, and I'm not a man. Like, And so, again, it had to be honest with myself in that. Um, but I've come to learn that, that so a conventional man really is, is somebody who's more self-focused, um, you know, somebody who's asking the question, What's in it for me? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, whereas an authentic man is somebody who's others focused, and and it's like, what can I do for you? Approach to life. So it's he's somebody who loves others, equips others, empowers others. And, and so you know, I talk about those two figures, and of course, the Apostle Paul in First Corinthians fifteen also talks about two men, right? The first Adam and the last Adam. And so if you if you if you if your question was in one word or two or three words, you know, what is your description or definition of authentic manhood? I would give you Paul's definition, which is he he gives these two comparisons. He says that the first Adam, um, Adam from the Garden of Eden, was um, uh, a a living being. Um, Another translation says a living soul. Really, he just existed. It, it, it It was finite, his existence, whereas he goes on to say, but the last Adam, being of course Jesus Christ, Garden of Gethsemane, um, he he was a life giving spirit. So how how do I how do I identify uh, a real man, an authentic man? He's somebody who's imparting life. He's always giving life and lifting others up, encouraging others. You know, like I say, empowering others. So that's the di- the difference. The, the, the conventional man is more focused on taking life and energy from others and an authentic man is all about giving life and, and energy to others. So that's that's how I would um, how, how I would kind of categorize um, those versions of manhood. You know the the uninitiated no no, no let me say it this way. Um, 
Eldridge talks about the initiation process of a man extending well into his adulthood. You know, in, in the work that we do, oh, yeah. we, we, we talk about pronouncing boys men and, and mm-hmm. guiding them over the threshold of boyhood to manhood, but the, the journey doesn't stop. And uh, I, I like that imagery um, that, that God is continually initiating us, but it also, it also it plays well to what you had just said about, um, about how developing an authentic manhood requires us to move past ourself and into a focus on others. And it seems like that is a journey. It's a journey of exploration. It's not like, you know, you just flip on a light switch and you've got it figured out. Like there's a, there's a whole process and it takes time and experience and bumps and bruises and victories. And that, like, Absolutely. It, yeah, I mean, I, I can see you nodding your head. It's, it sounds, it sounds like this is resonating with you. That that's what I'm, that's what I'm seeing as, as you're, as you're talking about that, uh, that process of going from a conventional view to an authentic view. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's, uh, it, it's, it's a process and, and it's a process that I'm sure you're still on and I'm still on. We're still making discoveries. I mean, God's continuing to sharpen and grow and, uh, and, and, and he'll allow certain things to happen in our lives to, uh, to, to, to bring us to a point where we sub- surrender and submit and, yeah. and, uh, you know, that it's, it's, it's never, it's never easy. It's, it, it, but initiation's not. Um, and, uh, and, and I don't think, I don't think there's ever one way either. I think, I mean, the only one way truly is, is walking with God. Um, but God does things differently, you know, for, for different men. Um, and it's just about, uh, in accepting the invitation when he when he says to us, as he said to the early disciples, um, "Come, follow me," and uh, you know I'm going to take you from being fishermen to fishers of men. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, for each one of us, there's an invitation to take us from one identity into another identity. And and I mean, he he lived and ate and you know slept beside these guys for three and a half years, and and. Um, you know, so how much more do we need him to, to really, and it took that long for them to kind of be initiated. And yet, and still, you know, you right. still saw That's right. Peter and, you know, Paul, and, and, and there was always right the way through their writings, you know, there was growth, there was changes, you know, and, and so that was just God's continuing initiation of them. Um, and it's the same, the same is true for us today. Yeah. So I, we, we have to be willing participants if we are not willing participants, then, um, you know, God will let us go our way. Um, but if we're willing, if we surrender and submit, yes, Jesus, come and initiate me. I want this. I, I want to be the real deal. I want to, I mean, he's conforming us to his image, right? He's restoring us and conforming and transforming us. And so, so long as we're willing participants in that process, um, then, then that's exactly that's going to be the fruit of it is, is that we that we will become more like him, right? The 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 imago day, that the, the image of God, you know, he, he he let us make man in our image, and and he made us, and and so uh, and of course there was the fall, and so there needs to be that restoration and and, and, um, and that process of of restoring the image of God within us, and so uh, when we say yes to that. Um, that just gives him permission to come in and to be the Lord of our initiation. And uh, that's, that's what's essential in that process. So I think a lot of that language that you just used is familiar, is familiar to those who have, uh, who have a relationship with Jesus or, or have mm-hmm. been around Christianity for a bit, right? That language mm-hmm. sounds familiar. But Darren, mm-hmm. I'm not so sure that, that we always make it specific about man making you know mm-hmm. a, about the process of becoming an authentic man we talk about it in in terms of being a christian or being a, a um you know a um a, a follower of jesus or whatever but i, I it, it it's like you you're directly making the connection not just spiritual but spiritual and male and the the importance um of of 
of the intersection of both of those to be that authentic man that, that you mm-hmm. know, Jesus is inviting us to be. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and, and please don't hear me just say male, also yeah, yeah. female. Sure. Right? Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it's, it's, there's a process on that as well. So, you know, it's, we've, we've been created in his image as male and as female and, and, both of us, both genders require restoration in that. And so there is a process, there is a walk with him. There's, uh, there's no magic wand. And, and if there was, we wouldn't, we really wouldn't appreciate it or really wouldn't understand the value of it. Um, but actually walking with him and, and, you know, having to, when, when things happen, when things go wrong in our lives to actually be inviting him into that, what is it that you want to show me? Um, you know what? How how is it that you're using this to grow me? And I uh, just again submit and surrender, come and and guide me you know, through this. Um, yeah, so it's definitely much uh, for for. I mean, I wouldn't be the man. I, I don't, I'm not sure if it wasn't for God and and for others who've loved God. I don't think I'd be. I don't think I'd be a man at all. Like still, um, but uh, certainly the man that I've become is nothing like the man that I was and I can only thank God for that. I mean, I'm a totally different man to the, to the, to that wounded son that existed um, all of those years ago um, who, who really, you know, was afraid of people or, or, or wanted to keep people at a distance because I thought that they would come and try and, 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 and disrupt and interrupt and, and wreck, quite frankly, um, this paradise that I was creating for myself. Um, this this I- idyllic life, um, but but I wasn't. That wasn't real life. It wasn't. There, there wasn't really a joy because again, I was being so driven by by my past. Yeah. And, but unaware of it. So you go through some initiation work on your own. You do some some surrendering and let Jesus do some of the heavy lifting. And and you now find yourself, uh, you've been a father for a while, but you find yourself ultimately with four boys, right? So, so now here's your opportunity to do different, maybe do it in a different, with a different mindset than, than when you were 17, but here's how, here's your opportunity to do different for your boys. Mm. Talk, talk about, yes. talk about that opportunity and, and how you've capitalized on that or how you've leaned into authentic manhood as mm-hmm. a father passing that on to your boys. Yeah. I mean, I, I as a boy growing up, um, I, especially in those teenage years, I think it's, I think we, most of us could say the same is true, true of ourselves that, um, I, I really struggled. I really stumbled. I really had no clear direction. I, I knew that physically there was some changes going on, but I didn't really know what was next or what was really happening. And like I said, I didn't really, my dad was physically present, but absent in every other way. And, uh, and so, I, I did it on my own. I had no guide, you know, but that's not God's way. That's right. God's, God's, God's way is that he is a guide and God's way is that he provides others, other human beings to, to guide us. And, and, and hopefully dads or some kind of father figure mentors as well, a community, a company of men. Um, and, and I guess, so I, yes, became aware of that. I wanted to do it well and I wanted to do it, as God intended, you know, and, and we know scripturally, right. The apostle Paul said, you know, when I was a child, I talk like a child, I, you know, thought, thought like a child, talk like a child, reason like a child. But when I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. And so, you know, he had had this sort of process as, as did Jesus. Um, and, and of course, every man, you know, th- more than 300 years ago, you know, every boy had some kind of process. And so what, what was it in our society? What could I offer our sons and of course in the early years um thankfully i I, so my eldest son was um uh five when i first read that book and and of course i've read other books you know and around this topic um and of course i've lived it so so really initially modeling to them you know modeling you know how a man treats a woman how, how how a man treats children and and um and just you know acting praying you know like just bringing the spiritual life you know, into it. So it wasn't, there wasn't this incongruence that was happening. It was like, no, this is, this is how a man lives. 
and leads integrity and, um, right like whole, wholeness like everything yes. just fits together yes yes exactly and so did that um but th- for me there was a there was a, a very um defined process so 13 years of age dad takes my son out um and when he turns 13 i get him to memorize um the four marks of a real man so a real man rejects passivity he accepts responsibility he leads courageously and he can expect that when he's lived that kind of life, he can expect God's greater reward for his life. So I just get them just to simply memorize that. I don't give them too much. Just I just got to memorize those four quick things, and um, and and then that begins the process of me um, saying as their life continues. So how are you going on that? Do you think in this moment here you're rejecting passivity um, and so on and so forth? And so um, we we uh, I actually. That's that's if they haven't done or done so already. I actually get them to invite Jesus in. I, I, I don't make any apologies. I say, listen, son, uh, being a man is hard, and, and I'm not. You're not a man yet. What what this is the the thirteenth birthday is really an invitation into a journey toward young manhood, and 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 so I kind of paint a bit of a picture without giving them too much detail. And I actually, again, I say to them, um, how do you want to respond? Are you up for this? Do you want to join me on this journey toward, you know, young manhood? And, yeah, thankfully they all said yes. Um, and and there's, a, there's a process. So, you know, there was that. There was, um, look, the, the, I guess I could talk about this a whole episode. I know we don't have time for that. So a, a great starting point for me was um, John Eldridge's The Way of the Wild Heart. And, of course, that was renamed, repackaged as Fathered by God, yep. uh, specifically in that um uh, cowboy ranger stage right. and uh, you know John puts like Sam's year in there and I think Blaine's year and so um, he's just got some really great things um, in there and, and, and I, being here in Australia I kind of you know we don't have mountain lions you know so so we kind of had to do things a little bit differently but you know I, I, all of the questions that I had as a young man um, and, and even as a, a so-called man becoming a Christian like so really bringing my faith into it so how do you pray? How do you hear the voice of God? Um, you know, what's fasting all about, you know, and, 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 so, and then give them those uh, practical applications of, of those teachings. Um, I introduced my kids via DVDs and so on, um, John Eldridge's Wild at Heart material and Robert Lewis's Quest for Authentic Manhood material. And, and um, you know, so there were other voices. And, of course, I bringing mentors in to play a part in their development. And, and so I think, I think when it all boils down, um, look, we, we did all sorts of things. You know, we did this invitation to a community of men um, whereby I'd take that one son somewhere between 13 and 16 away with a group of men and we would do an activity and usually based in and around one of my, that son's fear. And then um, when, if, something, if something went wrong and it did, for at least one of my sons, have each man then kind of speak into that place, which again is so super healing and just beautiful. But but your son gets an opportunity to see other men yeah. adventure together, live together, laugh together, so that they can spot the counterfeit. Um, I think there's two really key things, and one is they've got to have a vision for authentic manhood. If they don't have that, they need to see it. You know, kids learn what's been lived out in the home, so they need to see it, but they also need to be intentionally have that imparted to, right? They need to, we need to also teach it, Um, you know, know, bringing them up in the training and in the instruction of the Lord. You know, we we need to train, we need to instruct, and modelling is is really important, but it's insufficient in in and of itself. So, um, uh, so they needed a, a, a vision for authentic manhood because where there's no vision, the people perish, they're unrestrained. They're, that was me. Um, and they need what you were talking about earlier. Um, but, again, you can't just be that on its own. Um, they need a moment, uh, you know, where, where they've reached a specific milestone and that milestone is marked, it's celebrated. Um, you know, they've crossed that threshold. I'm no longer a boy and now I'm a young man. And You've been welcomed in by the community of men that dad has enlisted and recruited and brought in and they speaking into his life. And 
Um, and, and it's and it's not just for that. I mean, it's all stages. You know, I've, I did the same thing when my son. You know, my eldest son got married. You know, bringing in men instead of giving. You now he had a bucks night, but 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 he also had dad kind of bring in the community of men that had walked with him for all of these years that spoke into his life and and you know uh, ensure that he knew and he was prepared for marriage, for what he was about to get himself into. And, yeah. I mean, what would it have meant for you, Mark? And I certainly know one of, the, one of my motivations for this is well, it it's just comes out of a question, so maybe your listeners could even do that. What do I wish that I had received, Yeah. you know, from my dad, from a community of men, and then go and offer that, right? There's, there's, that's, that's, that's really important, but you, you, need, you need those two things, a vision and you need that moment, a that, rite of passage. So, so for for you, it started at twenty nine. For me, it was at twenty eight or twenty nine. I've got a three or four year old son at that point, and I'm asking that same question: like, am I am I a man yeah. yet? And I, yeah. I had a I had a good story. I had a great dad. I still do. I have a great dad. Um, yeah. But that was the piece that was missing for me, and that's what sent me on the journey of uh, of a process different but similar to what you just described. Yes, because yes. like that, I wanted that moment where where the man, the men in my life, spoke into me and said, "You you are enough." You have yeah, arrived yeah. into the community. You don't know everything yet. That will come down no. the road, but you know, and you've made the team, so to speak, yes, right? You've yes, made yes. welcome. Take You're your, one of us. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. what, that's what I wanted. And that, that's, yeah. that's one of the joys of, of being able to, to have a process like you described or, or like mm-hmm. I've done for my boys, like to, mm-hmm. to get them to that point and say, Hey, welcome. You're one of us now. Yes. And, and, yes. and we're going to treat you different, right? We've showed yeah. you, we've showed you what it's like to be in the group. Yeah. We've given you everything you need now. Welcome to the group and, and take your mm-hmm. place. Like it's just. And what's interesting, I don't, I, I'm assuming this has been your story too, Mark, but what's interesting is, is that when I did that for my sons, um, what I found is that instead of them going, oh, well, I don't need dad anymore, I don't need the community of men because I'm already one of them, so now it's kind of all, it's all been downloaded to me, the reality is is that they come back yes. and they, they, they actually want to, they actually see you being more important in their lives than you've even but then they've seen you be before. Yep. It's just a really beautiful thing where, you know, my, my sons, you know, will always, you know, phone and ask for advice on things, you know, and they just, honestly, they, they see me perhaps more heroically than they did when they were six and seven. Um, and, and it's just a real, it's a gift from God. I agree. Right? Just, the, just to be faithful with, with the blessings that he's given us, those gifts to, to then be able to impart that to them. And, and they come back and, and I've, I'm just so blessed that I've got really rich relationships um, with with my sons that are, that I've that 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 what I've sown I'm now reaping and it take I, I do need to warn your listeners I, and and maybe this wasn't your experience but it was certainly mine is for so long it seemed that I was not reaping what I'd sown um, and and you know it just wasn't aligning with the scriptures and yet it did it, it then it then it clicked you know and it's kind of like oh yes you know I just needed to be patient yeah right all that I'd sown did produce a harvest you know and and um, and and looking back now over those years I just think I'm so grateful that I did that I think too it's really important to know that you know, for your listeners, that it's never too late. That's right. right? That's right. It doesn't matter how old your sons are, they still want that. They still have a longing for that. And uh, and you can still provide that. Um, it may look a little different, but, um, uh, don't, you know, don't do not not do it. Yeah. If, if you've got older sons, you know, and, and you feel as though you've missed the boat, don't not don't not lend your strength. Don't not bring the community of men in. Don't not... Um, you know, bestow a, a very clear and healthy identity upon him because it'll it'll mean the world to him. Again, I, again, even at twenty, you, you said you, for you it was twenty eight, twenty nine. For right. me, it was twenty nine. Yeah. I would have taken that then, right? right I, I agree. It didn't matter that my dad, you know, blew the first, you know, for, for me um, that that first twenty eight, twenty nine years. But if he come in and said, Darren, here's, I'm really sorry. I want to, I, I missed this. I, I wasn't aware of it because I'd never received that, and and, and 
And but now I want to give that to you now that I am aware of this. I mean, I would have gone, yes, please. You know, I right. count me in. I'm, right. I'm up for this. I'm, yeah. Uh, so I'm 47, and I still like to hear my dad say, "I'm proud of you." Mm-hmm. Right? Like mm-hmm. it just it it's always there, and and you're 100 percent right. It's never too late to start. Mm-hmm. It's just start mm-hmm. now and, mm-hmm. and and capitalize on the time that you have, whatever time that is. I do want to just give one word of warning, though, to your listeners. Um, Don't do it too soon as as far as the intentional stuff, right? Be be intentional and model it in those early years. But, you know, they're boys and let them stay, let them be boys for that season that they should be boys. Um, And, and, and certainly, you know, lead them into a to a process. Um, you know, once they hit that thirteen year sort of range, but even I even think that that calling them a young man at thirteen is maybe a bit too hard. I mean, it's it, I think the way I've done it is 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 between thirteen and fifteen or thirteen and sixteen, depending on the child. It's like this is this is the journey toward that, and and a very active impartation sort of journey and experiential journey for my sons um and then then on their 15th or 16th birthday then is that moment where they're invited in there they're welcomed in as young men and you introduce them there's a celebration and you introduce them to the community of men uh, uh, sorry the, the larger community the 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 wives of the men that spoke into the children of the men so all of a sudden this becomes a community owned thing um and uh, and and then an invitation to be a man, you know, and and um, you know when the when the time is right. And uh, again, that's going to vary between between children. So I think we need to walk very closely with God. And uh, so you don't want to bestow it too soon, but you but you also don't want to miss it. At, you know, it need, it's something that's essential. But the timing is everything, right? God's timing is perfect. So what is God's timing for your son yeah. uh, or your daughter? And and you playing your your role in that. Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation, at least part one that I'm having with Darren immensely. It may not be as much as I did. We geeked out a little bit on some of these topics like the Lion King or on rites of passage and initiation. But I know Darren has a lot to say into the hearts and the lives of men and fathers today around authentic manhood or about looking to the scriptures and and seeing the the first man contrasted with the last man as he was talking about and i know i know how important it is for our boys to catch both a vision of what manhood is and to be celebrated at that moment that they cross into the community, that they cross that threshold, that vision and that moment that he talked about there at the end. So critical, so important that we be offering that to our boys today, guiding them through the process Well, this is where we're going to stop today. We're going to pick up, as we always do, right where we left off with the second half of the conversation, and we'll get more into the work that he's doing with Fathering Adventures, some of the stories that he's experienced, the transformation that um, that he's seen fathers and their and their kids go through, how it's how, how it's rippling through their lives and through their families and through their communities. But for now, we're going we're gonna to pause it here, and we'll pick up where we left off last time. So that's it, guys. Thanks for being with us today. If you have any feedback, just a reminder, you can get us at feedback at thenextmanup.com or on Facebook, we live at NMU Journey there. Okay, that's it. Looking forward to next time. Until then, guys, adios. Hey listeners, thanks for journeying with us on this Next Man Up podcast. You know, we would love to hear from you. Maybe you have a question or an idea, perhaps a topic for us to consider. If that's you and you want to reach out to us, you can get us at feedback at thenextmanup.com. That's feedback at thenextmanup.com. Again, we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, we'll see you later.